Hi, this is Tom Wheelwright and Jody Paydar, and we are very excited to be talking to you about two of the biggest issues in the accounting world right now, and those are pricing and staffing. And you go, well, why are those even related to each other? And the reality is, is that one of the biggest challenges we have with staffing is that we don't pay our people enough money. But the reason we don't pay enough money is because we don't price our services properly. So they actually go hand in hand. Don't you think, Jody? Oh, 100%. They're aligned. Yeah, I, I don't know how you can do. I don't know how you can even project out your staffing and know what you need and the type of people you need if you don't know what kind of services you're going to render and what that pricing looks like around those services. So, um, Jody, where do you want to start with this? Um, well, I think it starts with how about the Wall Street Journal article that was happened last week? I don't know if you saw it. Yeah, just and there it. was exactly. And there was an article about how all these accountants have pretty much abandoned the profession. And I think it it comes back to, again, pricing and staffing because they're overworked and they don't feel valued. And so they said, I quit for all intents purposes and we don't have enough people to do the work we currently have. And now we lost all these accountants. Right. So I where do we- are saying like, we've lost like 300,000 accountants yeah. in the last few years and then people coming in aren't nearly enough and when people coming in then they even then they don't come in for very long because they go wait a minute i don't want to work 70 hours or 80 hours a week um i if i'm going to work 70 80 hours a week i'm going to work in technology and get paid three times as much okay because there are technology jo right. jobs that start at two hundred thousand dollars a year right as opposed to I was reading in in the article and it said typical staff account in New York City is getting paid seventy five thousand dollars a year to start out so what do you want eighty eighty thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars right if you're gonna work those hours I mean you're gonna work 70 80 hours in technology but if you're gonna work those hours you're gonna want the pay and not have quite the same amount of stress well, right. And so if the Wall Street Journal is talking about it and the profession as a whole is talking about it, the only way we can kind of solve this problem is to do something different. We can't keep doing what we've been doing for the last umpteen years and expect things to change. So I think a lot of um, listeners are thinking, OK, so where do I begin? Where do I start? Right. That's the, right. the million dollar question. A a absolutely. So so, so I, I don't. So I always think you have to start with the value, right? What value are you delivering to your clients and what value are you delivering to your staff, right? So what is it that the clients want? What do the staff staff want? One of the challenges uh, we've talked about before, Jody, is that uh, accountants, as a general rule, we sell something that the clients don't value, tax returns and financial statements, and we give away what they do value tax consulting and other types of business consulting. So we like giving away advice, which is what's valuable and we're selling tax returns. So maybe we ought to just start by looking at why don't why are we selling the way we're selling? And that comes back to the pricing and the billing. 100%. And if you think about any other industry, they think about kind of like what they're producing and they think about how they're going to price it. Yet, you know, most CPAs go back to the hourly bill billing model, which is not relevant anymore, right? So if that's not going to be relevant, we have to switch it up and we have to figure out what the value is. And we have to think about pricing our services to align with who our team is and who we're going to hire. Yeah, I find it fascinating that um, CPA firm owners would never want to pay their staff on an hourly basis. And yet they're willing, they think that the clients are willing to pay an hourly basis. The problem, of course, with uh, with hourly rates is that the slower you are and the worse you are, the more you get paid. So <laughs> this like makes sense. I'm going, wait a minute. Okay, so let me get this straight. So I've been in the profession over 40 years. I've been in Ernst & Young National Tax. I've been an adjunct professor in a master's of tax program. I have all this experience. I've read the tax law hundred, literally hundreds of times. So I'm going to get paid less because I can do it off the cuff, right? I can literally tell you a code section off the top of my head 
than somebody who has to spend three hours researching it. Now, somehow, I don't know about you, Joe, but to me, as as from a client's perspective, and I think one of the things we miss is we don't put ourselves in the client's shoes. From a client's perspective, what is valuable to them? Is it the time you spend or is it the results you produce? And that I think that's the real key here is that when you talk about, you're always talking about billing and pricing, but billing is about the time you spend. Pricing is about the results you deliver. Is that fair? Yeah, 100%. And you price up front so that everybody understands how that result ties back to what they're going to pay. Because after you've done the work, you've kind of missed the opportunity to capture that value. So I think what the profession is, is dying for is wanting is kind of, well, great. You've told me I need to price differently. I, I know I need team, but the how, right? Like, where do I begin? And the new tax season's coming. And how do I get started? Right. And, and that's what that's what we're, we're going to share in our in, in our upcoming webinar is uh, we're going to share just how you do that specifically. But let me give you an example, Jody, of I think a profession that has done a good job with this. And that is the car auto repair. Um, mm -hmm. Right. I remember 25 years ago, you went into an auto repair and you said, I've got it's just not feeling right. And they'll, they, they say, okay, we'll take care of it. And they repair your car. And then you're thinking you're going to get a bill for $200 and you get a bill for $2,500. And you're going, wait a minute, this makes no sense. This is horrible. And, and you have a shouting match, right? With the mechanic. Right. Well, nowadays you never get that. They make you sign off. Yes, I want this. They'll send you a text saying you have to sign off. Are you okay with this? They'll send you a video of what they see <laughs> on the car. They'll do the undercarriage. You know, they'll do the whole right. thing nine yards before they charge you a dime because the last thing they want is an argument about the cost. And if you don't want to do it, don't do it. And they'll even say, well, look, um, here's something that has to be done right now. Here's something that's probably good to be done. And here's something that eventually you're going to have to do. Which ones do you want to do? And so one of the things I always think is that one of our, our jobs as a profession is to give our clients a choice. And we don't give them a choice with billing. We only give them a choice when we're pricing it up front. Right. And the other thing you've done is you've expressed the value and you've explained the value, right? Because so many of our customers, they don't understand the value of the advice. They don't understand the net tax savings. They don't understand how their action or lack of action is actually going to help them or hurt them. And they're not going to know it unless we tell them. And I think that's where so many accountants forget that, you know, we, we have to be that teacher to give them that information so that they can make the educated decision. And nine times out of 10, they're going to say, oh my goodness, like, just do it, do it. I trust you. I, you know, this is the right decision and I'm willing to pay for it, but it's because it's been explained up front versus after the fact where you're trying to like justify why you did it when the value, they don't, they don't perceive that value because they don't understand it. So, so a lot of it is just conversations that we as accountants have to have earlier, you know, earlier yeah. in the game. For sure. So, and, and, and we have to start by deciding what are we going to provide to the clients, right? Because right. we can't decide what the price is going to be until we know what we're going to provide. And so are we just going to provide tax returns? Are we going to do consulting? Are we going to do estimated payments? Are we going to do um, year end planning? Are we going to handle transactions? Are we going to handle an IRS? What is it we're going to handle, right? What, what's the scope of work, right? I mean, if, if you're, right. if you think about it, Typically, you hire a contractor, they give you a scope of work. This is what we're going to do. Here's what the price is going to be. And uh, we seem to be afraid of it. And yet what's funny is um, most of us really do know the price, even, e e even if we're billing, because it's pretty much the same as last year, right? I mean, you might have a little bit of an increase. You might have added a little thing. But for the most part, you already know what the price is of your services. You just don't tell your clients up front. And and you don't ask them to pay you up front, which is another piece I think that's a big mistake because I think, Jody, that we spend a, we spend an awful lot of time and effort being the bank for our clients. When or chasing it, chasing, and, chasing that receivable. <laughs> exactly. And honestly, I don't think they want that. I've never met a client. We So we've gone from, in, in my CPA firm, Jody, we've gone from um, billing, straight hourly rate billing, to uh, billing, but with a retainer and an estimated 
price up front to a okay. fixed price that we charge on a monthly basis. And what we finally uh, decided is that, you know, we, we don't want any kind of arguments whatsoever. And here's the price. And if you don't like it, that's okay. We, I mean, for example, we're just sending out our pricing, um, our engagement letters and our pricing. And we've decided on a minimum fee. And that minimum right. fee is for some of our clients is double what it was. And so we, I had a client, we have a client and oh, by the way, we have great clients there. I don't have one client I don't like, but we had a client comes back and he says, well, your minimum fee doubles my fee. Is that really worth it? I said, probably not. I said, would you like a referral? And he said, yeah, I would. So that's fine. We'll find him somebody. Now we're, we're fortunate. We have a network of CPAs. So it's easy for me to find somebody, right? Cause I, it's easy for me to right. refer. Cause I know my, the other people in my network and I know who to send somebody to. And, um, and I'm not just sending some stranger. And the, the nice thing there is, is that he had a choice. Now he could have said, you know what? I don't care. I'm, I'm happy to pay it. And most people, I think you'll, you, you found too, Jody, most people are going to say, I, I'm paying for a relationship. And I think this is another point on pricing. Are you paying for a relation? Are, are you selling a relationship or a transaction? And, uh, you know, too many of us, I think, sell transactions. So we sell a tax return. That's a transaction. We sell a um, consulting on a particular deal. That's a transaction. Right. And instead, maybe we ought to be thinking about, should we sell a relationship? So we'll talk about that more in the, in the, yeah. in the, in the, in the masterclass. Right. But I think that this idea of having, I personally, I like the business because I like my clients. That's why I like being in the business and I want the relationship. 100%. And I think the other side of that is when you think about, okay, if you've now given him the choice to go elsewhere because you've changed the billing or the pricing structure, right? Now you actually know how to staff for this tax season, right? You know exactly. what it's going to take because when you don't have team, you can't just bring everything in house like they, because it won't get done. And how is that for the rest of your client base? Because then you just, you're trying to squish too much into tax season and then everybody's angry. Not like, not some of your clients are angry. All of them are angry because phone calls don't get returned. Um, they're not getting the service they expect and it devalues your whole practice. And I think that's the other piece that CPAs haven't actually like understood. They they kind of think about it, but they don't really understand how much it devalues your practice when you take everybody on and you let everybody walk in your door because your team can't honestly service them. There's just not enough hours in the day. Well, I'll tell you the other thing that I found is I I, know, I actually have a projection for my of my income for the next year. And so I got this projection because it's based on our pricing, right? So this is assuming right. everybody stays. And this is the this is the projection of my income. Well, I looked at him going, okay, because salaries have gone up so much, my my income according to these projections is going down. I'm going, I'm not okay with that. So right. we have two choices, right? Either we cut staff, right? So we cut costs, right. or we increase tax, right. we, we increase the amount of work, or we increase our, our prices. So those are really our only three choices: cut costs increase uh, business or increase the price. And we increased the price pretty heavily last year because of the big inflation hit. And so I'm a little hesitant to do that. So it means, well, okay, if you want this, if you want this um, salary, here's what we have to do in order for that to work for me, because I'm not willing to take a big cut. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what happens. But see, I could never do that without the pricing. That's my point is that if we didn't price this out ahead of time and we didn't and know the what forecast, to right? It, we could never, we really would have a tough time forecasting. Yeah, we can always look at last year, but I, you know, it's so much easier to say, look, this is what we're actually going to collect, assuming everybody comes back. We don't know that, but right. so far we have not had this issue. Um, you know, we, we tend to take really good care of our clients. So they tend to come back and, uh, and we know, so we know what it's going to be. Yeah. And then we can decide, do we need to add staff? Do we need to add clients? What do we need to add? And we're of course fortunate that we don't have any issue adding either one. And that's where I want to get to next Jody is, um, uh, adding staff, because I think that that is the biggest, I think that's the biggest stress right now 
on uh, our profession is the staffing. Right, right. Who's going to do the work? Yeah, who's going to work? Like, and where right. are you going to find them? And how are you going to hire them? And how much are you going to pay? How are you going to train them? How are you going to train them? I mean, everything to be about staffing. One of the things that I noticed in that Wall Street Journal article, Jody, was that, you know, people, it's not like when I was young, when you expected to work 78 hours a week and uh, and it was okay, just, you know, for the first two years, you knew where you're going to do grunt work, right? Um, but right. now what we're we're seeing is, you know what, the young staff, they don't want to spend two to three years ticking and tying cash. They don't want to do that. They, they, they want something that they find meaningful. And so that's, to me, one of the keys in staffing is giving them an opportunity that is something they want to do, right? I mean, I don't know anybody wants to tick and tie cash all day. Right. Well, and it's a it's a different generation, right? They've grown grown up with everything automated. So their expectations walking in are very different, right? They don't want to do that grunt work that they know can be automated. So okay, so if they're not going to do that grunt work, what does that mean for us as leaders to help train them to be advisors sooner? Because if right. compliance is not what we're selling, right? If we're selling advisory or we're selling uh, then we have to get our team to be advisors a lot faster than we became advisors. You can't wait 10 years before you become an advisor anymore. That That's right. Now, I was very fortunate because I, I was in a small office of Ernst & Winnie. This is back before Ernst & Young existed. And um, I was in a small enough office that, and that they gave me a client interaction in the first six months, and wow. which was like really, really brave. I mean, it was really brave of them because I completely screwed it up. I remember the very first time I told a client on April 14th that they owed $300,000 on the 15th and they were not happy campers. And remember, so this is 30 plus years ago, right? So they are $300,000. That's a lot of money. That's like telling a client they owe a million dollars tomorrow, right? And uh, they were not happy campers. So, you know, that's a, it's, it's kind of a gutsy thing to do. Um, I find it's very rewarding though, because first of all, you know, the way you, if you want to increase your rev, your net revenue for the partners, what do you have to do? Well, if you're going to increase the net revenue for your partners, you have to leverage more. Mm -hmm. And if your highest value service is consulting, that's the service you have to leverage. So how are you going to leverage that service if you have people waiting five, six, seven, eight years before you ever put them in front of a client? You, you can't. I, I like to think about it like football, right? I always say, put your rookies in on the low accounts to begin with, let them get their feet wet and then let them grow. And I think too many, uh, too many practice owners don't even think about even letting them work on, you know, kind of those lower level clients um, where truly they only have to be like, I always say one Google in front of, right? Like you could be one Google ahead of your client. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. You don't know, have to know everything. You just have to know more your, than your client. Right. It's like, it's what, right. like when, you, when you're out in the, uh, out in the woods with your, your friend and uh, a mama bear starts chasing you, you don't have to out chase outrun the bear. You just have to outrun your friend. Right. So it's the okay. same, it's the same kind of thing when it comes to tax, especially, you know, you don't have to be the best tax. You don't have the, have the best tax professional, but you do have to have somebody who knows what they do know, what they don't know. And when right. to go where for to help. Look. that that that's exactly. and where to look and where to go for help. So one of the things that that I find very rewarding as a as a firm owner is developing the staff. Um, I have I've had so many staff. Frankly, I've had a lot of staff leave to start their own CPA firm, and I'm very proud of that. I'm actually very proud of that. And you go, wow, that's turnover. Well, you're going to have the turnover no matter what. So P right. if if people don't want to be employees their whole life and don't want to do the same thing the whole life, they're going to leave for one reason or another. I'd rather have them leave, start their own CPA firm, frankly, and have them be out there and doing something where I can say, wow, I'm the reason they could do that. And to me, that's very rewarding. And what that means is, though, is that we have to be master delegators. And I think that's a skill set. And I, I think in our webinar, I think we should talk about that um, uh, in, in a little more detail um, in our full day masterclass, Jody, about how do you delegate properly? So A, you don't have high risk 
And mm -hmm. B, they don't feel like they're thrown in the deep end without a paddle. Well, and you have the capacity to do it because you've thought about pricing and you've thought about what you're going to actually do this tax season ahead of time, right? As opposed to trying to scurry through it, because it's very hard to help your team if you're all too busy to like take a breath and really understand like kind of how to help them, how to, how to, how to delegate and how to do that. So again, I think it's all so intertwined and it's CPA firm culture for years that needs to change the business model, the culture, all of these things need to be adapted for the world today, because we don't live in the world that we used to. And so much of it has changed, but yet, you know, we want to continue doing what we did last year, but we already know it's not going to work. So we got to, we got to stop and, and think about it. What, what do they call the definition of insanity is doing the same <laughs> thing you've always done and expecting a different result, right? It's, it's just not going to happen. But I think the word you're you're talking about, that I do like this word. It's a very, um, it's, it's kind of a word of the day type uh, word, which is being intentional. And right. pricing, you're being intentional with your revenue and you're being intentional with your clients. And then you can be intentional with your staff. And so you're really doing something intentionally as opposed to doing something reactionally. So those would be the opposites, right? Intentionally versus reactionally. And so many, so many of our uh, colleagues, Jody, I think spend too much time reacting and not enough time projecting and intending. Right. Because other stuff is going to happen that you're not going to have control over. So you need to control the things you can control because, you know, someone's going to get sick inevitably during tax season. Something always happens. It, it never fails. I don't think there's a tax season that I experienced where there wasn't something that came up that was unexpected that I, I didn't have to re respond to. And if you at least have all the other things working, that emergency reaction isn't so like it isn't so devastating. Whereas if everything else is chaos and now you have something that happens, it isn't as easy to like kind of recover from. So I think if you can control certain things, then as something invariably is going to happen, you're just better prepared to respond to it and not even miss a beat. So, and I think that's what CPAs want and tax practitioners want. They want to have, I mean, we love tax season, right? Like, again, it's so funny because for as much as people complain about tax season, there there's a love there about tax season. And so how do we make this year's tax season the best season yet while we, you know, we know that the world has changed and we have to change with it. And I think it starts by coming to the webinars. Uh, no, no question. I mean, I think this is the one thing, you know, sh sharpening our saw, right, as they say, right. is something that we have to do. And, you know, we can really reduce a lot of our time, a lot of our stress. And a lot of the stress of our staff, I think, when we we kind of get some of the best practices and, you know, you've done so much work in the pricing area and uh, we've gone so far as to actually start our own recruiting company just because <laughs> we because the whole training and staffing has been so important um, to me. When I started my first CPA firm back in 1995 was when I started my first CPA firm um, after many, many years in big four and uh, and and. Um, public companies, um, I decided I had two goals. And the first goal was to create a work environment where people loved coming to work. And that was goal number one. And so uh, goal number two was serving entrepreneurs better than they were getting served. And those are still our same two goals. And uh, the thing is, is that when we, you know, when we do things and have our staff do things that they enjoy doing, typically the clients enjoy it as well, because what it means is that, you know, clients are going to, I mean, take me, um, I, you know, I speak all over, I'm, I'm, I'm doing PR, I'm doing marketing, I'm doing all these other things. Clients can't get a hold of me that easily. I mean, they, they can try, but they can't, but my staff, they can get a hold of my staff going to be responsive and they can get right back to them. And so I can have my staff involved and I can still see the email. I can still see, you know, I can still get updated on the conversation. I don't have to be the one driving the day to day work. And because of that, I think we have much happier clients because they're getting served better than frankly, if I were doing everything. Yeah, 100 percent, because like because it takes a team. And I think that CPAs as a whole, um, a lot of it has to do with trust and things like that. But I think, again, it, it's an opportunity for change to happen. 
And it, it's got to happen because like, it's not sustainable. Like the way firms are operating today is not sustainable. And someone could say, oh, well, I'll wait till after tax season to change. Well, guess what? Tax season never ends. We know that, right? There's always something. So why not start in January as part of the new year and get yourself revved up for uh, an awesome tax season this year and not wait and not delay? Yeah, for sure. And, and here's the thing. Can you change pricing in the middle of the year? Of course you can. You can, you know, build those early people the way you've been doing it, price the, the new people. And so I think we can always be learning. We can always be adapting. We can always be changing. It takes a little time, but it's honestly, I found it's not that hard. Um, of course, I don't mind change. So that's, I'm different than a lot of CPAs, uh, but we, we completely changed our pricing strategy last year and we changed it across the board. And we had conversations with every single client. We had a couple of clients that were a little tentative about it, um, but they all seemed to be on board. So, um, you know, the fact is we may be more afraid of it than our clients are. And chances are our clients are not going to react quite the way we think they might we're, or what we're afraid of. Right. I, I would 100% agree with that. So I, so, so Jody and I, we, we just love to have you come. Um, to this webinar. We think that uh, it's going to be an amazing, uh, it's a, you know, we've got a full day coming up, a full day of talking about pricing, staffing, training. Um, you know, how do you do this? We'll get into the nitty gritty. We'll go through it in great detail. And so that you can really have something to take away and you're going to know exactly, okay, I can do this. This is what I can do. This is how I can do it. This is what's been done. I mean, we're not going to tell you things we haven't either seen done or done ourselves. I have a policy that I don't do. I don't make any recommendations to a client or anybody else that I haven't tried. So I, I pretty much tried everything um, because <laughs> I, I, I just don't feel comfortable unless I, I've done it. And if I do it and I feel, okay, this has been successful, this is something to pass on. Yeah, I 100% agree with that, that, you know, I we've made the mistakes ourselves, we've learned from them, and we've evolved, and we've figured out better ways. So like, it's, it's, it's about sharing them so that you guys too can have the life that you want. I always think about it from a lifestyle perspective. And how can you get your time back? So tax season isn't so crazy so that you really, I know you already love tax season, but that you love it even more, right? You love all parts of it, not just the tax work during tax season, right? Because I think people like the technical piece, but they hate the hours, but we we make it so that it becomes, you know, really sustainable and not this crazy, the, this crazy workplace. So um, yeah, so we really hope you'll join us and just learn more about pricing and staffing. Awesome. Because as we like to say at, uh, at our company, WealthAbility, you know, you get better clients, then you end up with... Um, a better practice. And you always get from there, just like you say, Jody, you get a better life. So that's, I, I, I love those three things, bring those three things together, better clients, better practice, which is part of the staffing and better life.